Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. And welcome. We begin our ceremony today or this evening uh, with an acknowledgement of the land for which we stand and the people who have stored it across the generations. Gettysburg College is on unceded indigenous land, including the traditional homelands of the Susquehannock, Conestoga, Seneca, and the Hanasani Confederacy, the Lenin Lenape and Shawnee nations, and the connections of indigenous people to this land continue to today. We have a responsibility to honor these connections, and we strive to understand our place within the past, present, and future of this indigenous land by reflecting on our relationship with our human and other than human relatives with whom it is shared. Won't you pray with me? In the light of our creator, in the still of this evening, our stories converge in this room, in the chaos that is our world, and the commotion that is this season, here we are still for just a little while, to be welcomed, to be glad, to be seen, and to be remembered. We greet each other tonight to be reminded that we are privileged, to take a deep breath and know that we are safe. And that privilege makes us responsible, and that responsibility makes us free to change the world, to bring peace, ashe and amen. Now, please join me in welcoming to the podium President Bob Iliano. Thank you, Bright, and good evening, everybody. Welcome, family, friends, uh, loved ones, fellow Gettysburgians. We're here tonight to celebrate a remarkable group of seniors and all they have achieved as members of this community. To our soon-to-be graduates, excuse me, a little loud, uh, let me extend to you a warm and hearty congratulations on this special day in your lives. We are here tonight to honor 17 graduates who will walk across the stage, students who have authored a Gettysburg story that is uniquely their own, who have dedicated themselves to excellence and experienced firsthand the joys of collaboration and hard work and have persevered and succeeded in the face of the unforeseen challenges. You guys know what I'm talking about. All here to arrive in this moment. Graduates, you have earned this moment. We are so proud of you. Of course, as is true for so many milestones in our lives, we don't reach them alone. It's only through the love and encouragement of those around us that we can truly realize our fullest potential. So graduates, uh, in this spirit of, gra of gratitude, would you please stand if you're able? And turn around, if you're willing. <laughs> And at this time, I'd invite you to turn to your parents as well as your family, friends, and loved ones in attendance tonight and join me in extending them our deepest thanks for their support. Please be seated. Parents and loved ones, thank you as well for entrusting us with your student over the course of the last several years and also helping to shape a person who so profoundly shaped this campus. Thank you all very much. So, seniors, tonight is a moment both to look back and to look ahead, to reflect on this incredible journey to graduation and what it means for your future. Your first steps in this journey were as, wa as wobbly as they were resolute. A hopeful child making your way across the living room floor with each teetering stride toward your parents' outstretched arm and into what only could be described as an ecstatic embrace. You all don't remember this, but I'm quite confident that your parents do, and those first steps will be forever etched in their memories. In a moment, you're going to take another step of consequential steps across the stage to become a Gettysburg College graduate, processing alongside the very people who shared in this journey with you, your classmates, your teammates, your friends. Graduates, you have taken tens of millions of steps to be here, and yet this much is clear. Look around. Our lives are not a solo expedition. We need one another every step along the way. This was on vivid display on this campus just two days ago. 
On Monday, our campus community celebrated another graduation of sorts. We hosted a retirement party for our dear friend and colleague, Jeffrey Gable. The ceremony was held right across the street at the atrium and was filled with Gettysburgians from across the generations. Now, for those of you who don't know Jeffrey, he has served as the founding executive director of our Majestic Theater for 20 years, and he is responsible for transforming the Majestic into one of the most beloved small town theaters in America. He spent more than four decades in the entertainment business, including as an executive at PBS, where he contributed to iconic television shows like Barney, Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego, and of course, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, where he became a lifelong friend with Fred Rogers and served a recurring role on screen, apparently as Chuckles the Clown. So during our celebration of Jeffrey's retirement, it would have been easy to have focused on his many professional accolades and accomplishment. But here's the thing. That's not where most of the comments were focused, among his closest friends and his colleagues. Instead, in focusing on Jeffrey's journey, the tens of millions of steps he took to get to that point, very few noted those aspects of his career even fewer spoke of his title, his job, or even his distinguished career. In most instances, they spoke about Jeffrey, just Jeffrey, the person. The man he is, the path he traveled, and how he helped so many other people find their own way. In short, they spoke to the consequential life Jeffrey lived in service to others and a world that needs more people like him. Graduates, your journey to this point is a triumph. I hope you feel enormous pride in all that you've accomplished as members of this remarkable academic community. You've earned a degree from one of the nation's finest liberal arts and sciences schools. It is most certainly a cause for celebration. But like Jeffrey before you, I hope you likewise celebrate the people who walked alongside you, the people who cheered for you at every step along the way, the people who love you for you, because no matter what your next step, no matter where you go from here or what you accomplish in your career, remember the people who surround us are, what are the things that make this journey worthwhile, and the people who love us will forever be our greatest destination. Again, on behalf of the entire Gettysburg College community, our faculty, our staff, your fellow students, um, my very heartiest, heartiest congratulations on your accomplishment tonight, and I am so looking forward to all you will accomplish in the years ahead and welcome you back to campus at your reunions. Again, congratulations, everyone. It is now my pleasure to introduce our provost, uh, Jamila Bukwala. Thank you, President Giuliano. And I join the president in congratulating all our mid-year graduates and soon-to-be graduates. I would also like to welcome your friends and your families, especially your parents and guardians, who have encouraged you, supported you, and hoped for you since the moment you selected Gettysburg College and first arrived here on campus. All of us present in this room at this institution and beyond, have been here to support your work and your growth. It is one of the true joys of being part of this special community, so congratulations again. When you graduate from Gettysburg College, you are prepared for the challenges that await you. Through our rigorous liberal arts and science curriculum, through your educational experiences on and off campus, inside and outside the classroom, and as a Gettysburg graduate, you are ready. Let's mark the end of your years here at Gettysburg College as a celebration of new beginnings. In the words of the remarkable Lin-Manuel Miranda, you are about to enter the most uncertain and thrilling period of your lives. I want to remind you that this college, your professors and advisors, your classmates and friends, your Gettysburg experience will always be with you, wherever you go in the world. It will continue to shape and influence everything you do, 
the way in which you approach new situations and ideas, the way in which you engage and communicate with others, the questions you ask, and the decisions you make. This recognition ceremony is a meaningful experience not only for you and your families, but also for all those who have supported you on your journey. Your family, your professors, your advisors, your mentors, and your friends. It is a joyful celebration, and yet we will miss having you among us on campus. Every semester, we watch talented students step out into the world, and it is never easy to see you go. But I want you to know that we are rooting for you, and we look forward to seeing all the wonderful things that your futures hold. So take Gettysburg College with you and continue to stay connected with us as we remain connected with you. Now, on this happy occasion, I am pleased to introduce you to you an outstanding member of our faculty, Professor Heather Odell Dussault, David M. Levan Endowed Chair of Ethics and Management. Professor Odell Dussault joined Gettysburg College in 2008 after earning her PhD in Industrial Organizational Psychology at Clemson University. She earned a bachelor's in psychology and sociology from Bowling Green State University, after which she obtained a master's in applied psychology in 2005. She, Professor Odell Dussault teaches courses in organization theory, work life and family balance, as well as a senior capstone experience in the management department. Her research interests include the dynamics of the selection interview, integrity selection testing, and occupational health and well being. Her research program at Gettysburg has centered on the work family interface, focusing on how specific organizational resources aid in the management of work and non work domains. Professor Odell Dussault has co-authored numerous peer-reviewed journal articles and book chapters. We are immensely fortunate to have Professor Odell Dussault on our faculty. She is a big part of what makes Gettysburg College exceptional. Now, on behalf of all the faculty, please join me in welcoming Professor Heather Odell Dussault. Good evening, everybody. College administrators, my faculty colleagues, proud parents, family members, and loved ones, and most importantly, the resilient, hardworking graduates before me. Congratulations to you for this tremendous achievement. It is an honor to be here and have the opportunity to speak to you today on behalf of the faculty on what is such a celebratory and commemorative day. Today, we come together not just to acknowledge and celebrate this academic achievement that is the completion of one chapter of your lives, but to also reflect on that journey, including those unexpected twists and turns that have led you to this moment. As we all know, life has a way of diverging significantly from the meticulously crafted plans we once had for ourselves. Yet, it is in these deviations, in these challenges, that we find the true test of our character and the once unimagined opportunities that await us just beyond the bend. Each one of you has navigated a unique path marked by these unforeseen challenges and moments of success that speak volumes about your resilience and determination. Consider for a moment the expectations and dreams you had when you first began this journey. How many of you foresaw the detours, the hurdles, and the uncertainties that lay ahead. Our lives seldom follow a linear trajectory. Yet, here you are, not just as examples of perseverance and resilience, but as individuals shaped and strengthened by the journey's unexpected turns. Resilience, however, is not just about weathering the storms. It's about using the energy from those storms to propel yourself forward. It's about learning from setbacks, adapting to change, and emerging not just unscathed, but transformed. And that means there's hard work that goes into your journey. 
Here at Gettysburg College, we have the mantra, do great work. But great work certainly is not easy work. It's hard. And this hard work isn't just about putting in the hours. It's about the tenacity to keep going when the past seems daunting. It's the late night study sessions, the revisions, the extra mile you walk to grasp a concept, and the persistence that fueled your journey. Each assignment completed, every exam taken, and all the small victories along the way are testaments to your grit and hard work. And here's the most beautiful part about the narrative of these journeys. The intersection of resilience and hard work, but also giving back. As you stand on the brink of a new chapter, think of those who, like you, faced uncertainties and challenges, but also chose to make a difference. We often think of well-known exemplars, Martin Luther King Jr., Mahatma Gandhi, Mother Teresa, but history is filled with lesser known exemplars who turn personal adversity into a force for good. Consider the example of Sarah Breedlove, born in 1867 to formerly enslaved parents. She faced numerous challenges, including poverty, lack of formal education, and racial discrimination. She developed her own formula of hair care products and became one of the first self-made female millionaires in the United States. But Breedlove also used her success to empower others. She employed and trained thousands of black women as sales agents, providing them with economic opportunities and a chance for financial independence. Ultimately, Breedlove chose to use her wealth and her platform to support multiple charitable causes and became a prominent advocate for civil rights. Or think about Isabel Allende, a Chilean-American author who faced political exile from her home country due to a political coup in 1973. After relocating to the United States, she faced the challenge of writing in a new language. Allende's perseverance led to her becoming one of the most widely read Spanish language authors. Her novels often address social justice issues, and she uses her platform to address issues of gender inequality, immigrant rights, and political repression. Another example is Robert Egger. He founded DC Central Kitchen, a nonprofit that combats hunger and poverty by training individuals in culinary arts. He faced challenges that come from tackling the vast scope of homelessness and hunger, including securing funding and resources, building trust and engagement in local communities, navigating bureaucracy, and collaborating with government agencies to advocate for supportive policies. That journey has led to a successful nonprofit organization that provides meals to those in need and addresses root causes of hunger. Closer to home, perhaps some of you can relate to the story of a classmate who worked tirelessly to overcome personal challenges, be it financial struggles, health issues, or family hardships. Their determination to push through adversity, to keep showing up despite life's hurdles, serves as confirmation of the power of resilience. In your own lives, I know many of you have experienced unexpected challenges as well, academic, personal, or otherwise. Perhaps the major you thought was your calling turned out to just be a stepping stone. Maybe personal relationships took unexpected turns, or health setbacks altered the course of your Gettysburg journey. But you made it through. And as a result, a world of opportunity now stands before you. Your presence here today is validation of your resilience and hard work, your ability to adapt, and your determination to overcome any obstacles in your path. Now, as you continue your individual journeys beyond these academic walls, carry with you the lessons of resilience, the ethic of hard work, and also the spirit of giving back. The roads ahead will continue to diverge, but remember each twist and turn offers an opportunity for growth, for discovery, and for making a positive impact on the lives of others. Congratulations, graduates, for embracing the unpredictability of life and emerging as resilient individuals ready to shape the world. May your paths be filled with purpose and fortitude. May your endeavors be fueled by hard work. And may your hearts be open to the service of others, making the world a better place. Thank you.
Good evening. I'm Ann Ehrlich, Vice President for College Life. It's now my pleasure to acknowledge each of you individually. When your name is announced, please join me on stage, where President Uliano will congratulate you as I read your hometown and major. In addition, you have each had full, rich experiences during your time at Gettysburg College. Many of you have provided us with a significant detail about your college career, which I will also share. Following the ceremony, we hope you will share even more of your Gettysburg experiences as you celebrate with family, friends, and faculty. And now we will begin by recognizing our graduates. Meha Athwal from Devon, Pennsylvania, majoring in philosophy. Meha's favorite class was philosophy of law with Professor Mullen. Harrison Burke, from San Antonio, Texas, majoring in economics. For his capstone, Harrison studied gambling and market inefficiencies with home team underdogs. Clayton Brosend, from York, Pennsylvania, with majors in economics and public policy. Clayton studied the policy causes of the 2021 infant formula shortages and developed a case for regulatory discretion and greater trade liberalization. <laughs> Ashley Carvajal. From the Chicago suburbs of Illinois, Ashley majored in English with a writing concentration. She enjoyed her creative writing classes and classes focused on Native American issues. Arden Dowd, from Brookline, Massachusetts, majoring in biology and environmental studies. Arden studied abroad in the Bahamas and Ecuador through the biology department and participated in EXIG in Panama with Professor Trio and Professor Caldwell's lab. <laughs> Dylan Foote, from Cape Elizabeth, Maine, majoring in religious studies. Dylan's favorite class was violence and nonviolence, taught by Professor Sujapati in the religious studies department. Dylan Galgano, from Pennington, New Jersey, majoring in business organization and management. Dylan's favorite class was his capstone, where he learned about the gig economy. <laughs> Molly Griffith, from Biglerville, Pennsylvania, majoring in English with a creative writing concentration. For the last four years, Molly has been a proud LenFest scholar and a grateful recipient of support from the LenFest College Scholarship Program. <laughs> Bella Hoffman from Whitehall, Pennsylvania, majoring in psychology and sociology. Bella's proudest Gettysburg moment is graduating. <laughs> Vanessa Igras from Lindenhurst, New York, majoring in international relations and anthropology. For Vanessa's capstone, she wrote about the detention, repatriation, and rehabilitation, rehabilitation of terrorists with a unique focus on resolving the ISIS detainee dilemma in northern Syria. <laughs> Morgan Krepp from Dallas, Texas, majoring in political science and English. Morgan's political science capstone topic discussed military aid and economic security, specifically how US military aid affects gross domestic product. <laughs> Sophia Luckenbaugh, from Reston, Virginia, with majors in psychology and women, gender, and sexuality studies. 
During Sophia's Wigs capstone, she explored the roles of affect and identity within the sex culture on the Gettysburg College campus. <laughs> Isabella Olette from Berks County, Pennsylvania, majoring in health sciences. Isabella's proudest Gettysburg moments have come following dark times when she was vulnerable and thankfully was gifted the help she needed to make it here today. Lance Parthamore from New, Cum from New Cumberland, Pennsylvania, majoring in economics. Lance is honored to have received the Garrett Shaw Goodwin Alpha Chi Rho Memorial Award for Career Development. David Ring from Wyckoff, New Jersey, majoring in psychology. David's proudest moment was participating in the Phi Delta Theta Haunted Mansion every October to raise money for Adams County Youth Services. Ben Schneider from New Canaan, Connecticut, majoring in history. Ben's favorite class was History 343, The Early Republic with Professor Berkner. Wow. Quentin Yang from Shanghai, China, majoring in business organization and management and economics. Quentin's capstone topic was diffusion of innovation theories, applicability in globalization. Let's give another big round of applause for our Gettysburg College graduates. Now, I would like to welcome Thomas Lynch IV, class of 2024, to lead us in the singing of the alma mater. Thomas will be followed by the benediction from Chaplain Bright, and then a final message from President Giuliano. Please stand if you are able. As softly the evening shadows are veiling the campus toss, we come a band of good fellows to sing in the twilight house. The silvery moonlight mantles, the worn walls of chapel anew. The wind in the trees sweetly echoes the praises of orange and blue. Whenever thy loyal ones gather to wake in fond memory, our thoughts shall be turned all my mater, old Gettysburg, back to thee. Forever am I thy debtor, and whatever else I may do, I love, I'll defend, and I'll honor a glorious orange and blue. Thank you, Thomas. Won't you pray with me? In the season of gratitude and celebration, we gather for reflection and reckoning to mark moments that are beginnings and endings to stand and be recognized for finishing what we have started, for becoming the person you imagined four or more years ago, a Gettysburgian, a scholar, and a global citizen, to see yourself older, seasoned, and more confident. Take a deep breath. Be satisfied that purpose and opportunity have manifested in you. May this taste of knowledge and wisdom make you hungry and thirst for more. And by the mercy of God, may it be all that you ever hunger and thirst for. Ashe and Amen.
you all can sit. We're almost done. Graduates, actually, I got that wrong. You all should still stand. This is your exercise for the night. Um, at the college, we promise each one of you a personal education, and seeing you all cross the stage tonight is just how clear it is, just how personal this experience has been uh, for each of you. In reflecting on the comments that you heard tonight um, and the poignant messages from Professor Odell Dussault, I'm reminded of the words of the Chinese philo philosopher Lao Tzu. He observed, and here I quote, a journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step. Graduates, my charge to you tonight is to heed Professor Odell Dussault's advice to embrace life's unexpe unexpected twists and turns, and with it, the opportunity for growth, for discovery, and for making a positive impact on the lives of others. Graduates, this is your time. Take all that you have learned here to go forth and to do great work out there in the world. We believe in you. We always will. Now, to conclude our ceremony, I would invite our family, friends, and entire community here this evening to, to please join me once again in congratulating our newest college graduates.